In this video, our goal is to approximate the area under a function f of x on an interval a to b by slicing it into n rectangles. So we're slicing into n rectangles. And this time we're measuring the height of each rectangle from the right hand side of the subintervals. Okay, so our slicing is going to look like this. All right, the next thing we want to do is write down the width of each subinterval, and I'm going to call that delta x. That's going to be the total width of the interval divided by how many rectangles we chopped it into, so b minus a over n. Next, we try to get a mathematical description of these cut points that define the boundaries of the rectangles. And we start by saying that a is equal to x0, and then I take n steps to the right, and b is equal to xn. So this would be x1 right here, x2, and so on. And somewhere in the middle, we're going to call it xi, and that's what I want to get an expression for. So xi is going to be the starting point plus how many steps you took to the right. So i steps to the right. Now that that's written down, we can express our approximate area as f of x1 noting again that we're measuring the height at the right end of each subinterval so the height of the first rectangle is f of x1 the second one is f of x2 and so on so the area of my first rectangle is f of x1 delta x that's just height times width my second one f of x2 delta x and you can see in the picture that the last rectangle has its height measured at xn, so that's f of xn delta x. This can be written in summation notation, and I'll call it a right-hand sum. It'll be the sum as i goes from 1 to n f of xi delta x. So now we've got a formula that allows us to approximate an area by using the right-hand side of each subinterval for the height of all the rectangles we're slicing into. Let's apply this to a simple example. In this example, we're using the function e to the negative x squared. And the reason I chose this function is because there is no symbolic antiderivative for it. So you have no choice but to use numerical approximations. And what I'm going to get is the n equals 10 right-hand sum for this function on the interval 0 to 1. So here's what it looks like when it's sliced into rectangles. And we would normally call the starting point x0. The finishing point is xn, which in this case is x10. And along the way, we have x1, x2, and so on. And the first thing we want to do is get an expression for the width of each of these rectangles. That's going to be the interval width divided by how many subintervals we chopped into. So 1 over 10 is the interval width. Then we want to get an expression for the ith cut point. So we're trying to get an expression in general for the cut points. And that would be the starting point plus i steps to the right. So i times 1 over 10. Then the height of the first rectangle is going to be f of x1 then f of x2 is the height of the second rectangle all the way to f of x10. So I can write my area approximation in expanded form one more time. as f of x1 delta x plus all the way to f of x10 delta x. And in summation notation, I have my right-hand sum. It's going to be the sum as x or as i goes from 1 to 10. f of xi delta x. And now I can plug in my actual function. And I get the sum as i goes from 1 to 10. e to the negative xi squared. Well, xi is i over 10. So e to the negative i over 10 all squared multiplied by delta x, which is one tenth. Now I can evaluate this sum by using a computer algebra system or a TI calculator. So here we are in maxima, and I've written the sum of 0.1, that's the one tenth for the rectangle width, 
times percent E, that's the special symbol for E in maxima, to the negative I over 10 squared as I goes from 1 to 10. I put float out in front in order to get a decimal approximation from this. So I'm going to hit shift enter and I get 0.7146, etc. I'm just going to keep three decimal places here. So 0.715. Now, I want to mention one thing before we move on, and that is because e to the negative x squared is decreasing on this interval, my right-hand sum is underestimating the true area. You can see that every rectangle leaves a little bit of area unaccounted for. And so I want to check for a more accurate answer and then just verify that our rectangle approximation underestimated. So we're back in maxima, and what I've done is write down quad QAG so this is the numerical integration algorithm in maxima. And I write my function, percent e to the negative x squared, as x goes from 0 to 1. The last number here is just the algorithm that I chose. You can choose any algorithm from number 1 to number 6. They're all different numerical ways of, of getting an approximation to an integral. And these are good to like 10 plus decimal places, so way beyond what we're really concerned with. And I'm going to hit shift enter. And the first number you get there is the actual approximation of the area. So in this case, just keeping three decimal places, I get 0.747. And I can see that my rectangle approximation was indeed an underestimate.